In this video, we'll discuss future values of annuities. Now, annuities are financial plans with regular payments. An ordinary annuity is where we're going to focus, and this is when the payments are made at the end of each of those equal payment intervals, or the periods. We're going to talk a lot about the future value, and that's the sum of all of those payments that are being made, plus the interest that accrues during the time period in which the annuity matures. Another type of ordinary annuity is called a sinking fund, and this happens when businesses or municipalities save money to pay off a debt or a bond in which they've borrowed. Another type of annuity is called the annuities due, and this is when the annuity has payments that are due at the beginning of each period but we're not going to deal with that in this video. Now, when we want to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity, we have this formula, which we're gonna go through each of these parts. The A is the future value, just like when we had compound interest. Now, P, instead of being a principal, is the periodic payment. So when we had compound interest, that P stood for the amount that we stuck into the account or borrowed at the very beginning. Here, this is money that is being poured into the annuity at regular intervals. R is still our interest rate, and T is still time in years. And N is still the computed times that interest will occur. How many times are we compounding? And again, we still have our monthly, our quarterly, and our semi-annually options. And it's still true that, that R over N represents our periodic rate, and that that exponent of the number of computations times time will be the number of periods for which this occurs. So let's apply this formula to help us solve some problems around ordinary annuities. So say that Sam deposits $400 into an IRA at the end of each month for 30 years. The account pays an annual interest rate of 5% compounded monthly. How much money will Sam have in the account after 30 years? So let's take the parts that we do and do not know. We're being asked how much money will Sam have after 30 years. So that's going to be the future value. It's unknown at this point. Then we see that Sam is depositing $400 each month. So 400 is that periodic payment. There's an amount going into the annuity every month. It's at an interest rate of 5%. And it's being told that it's happening over 30 years. So this is like trying to build a retirement account. And last thing is that it's being compounded monthly. That means it's happening 12 times every year. And that matches with how many times Sam is depositing into the account every month, which is 12 times in a year. So let's place the information we have into the formula. So now we have in our numerator 1 plus 500 divided by 12 all raised to the 12 times 30 minus 1, all that divided by 500 divided by 12. So we're going to simplify each of our fractions here. And then we can say this is, we sum our two values, and then we're going to raise that to the 360th power. Next, we subtract 1, and then we divide by our denominator, and now we can multiply that by the $400 and see that in this account, if Sam puts $400 in every month, after 30 years, there'll be $332,903 and 19 cents because we want to round to the hundredth. So that's why it's important that when we set up our retirements that we start early and invest whatever we can because it can build up very quickly. Now let's look at another example. The Galvez family wants to put a down payment of $30,000 on a new house in five years. They decide to save money in an annuity that pays an annual interest rate of 6% compounded quarterly. How much money will the Galvez family have to pay into the annuity at the end of each quarter to meet this goal? So here we know the future value, which is $30,000. The question is how much is being paid at each quarter. That's our periodic payment that is unknown. The interest rate stated as 6%, and it stated this is over five years. And then we are compounding quarterly that interest, so that's every four times a year. So now we have our information we can substitute into our formula. So this becomes 30,000 equals P times in our numerator 1 plus 600 divided by 4, raised to the 4 times 5 minus 1, 
and all that divided by 600 is divided by 4. So we can simplify this right hand side. And then inside my parentheses, I can add these and then raise it to the 20th power. I can then subtract 1, divide my numerator by my denominator, and then say I have here now 30,000 equals 23 and 1,236,671 10 millionths times P. So I'm going to divide both sides by that value and that's going to give me 1,297 and 372 thousands. And that's rounded because we're dealing with money. So I can look at that thousands place to understand how to round. And I see here then that the Galvez will have to make a quarterly payment of $1,297.37. In other words, every three months, they're going to put this amount of money into the annuity for five years.